Hey guys, James here again. This is going to be What If Luffy Had the DNA of All One Piece Races. I already did Strong Pirates, now I'm in the races. But I'm going to go over the races that I'll give him. It sounds, it sounds like I'm saying racists, but races. Like, um, the Kuja. Well, Kuja kind of humans, but they're really weird. Like, they're way different than normal humans, but... I guess there's different kinds of, of races, like different branches of races, races different, uh, or just one race in general. Like, humans I'll give, like, branches, like Kuja or Torino. I'll go over everything. So, Kuja and Torino Kingdom, their advantage of the Luffy would be hockey and medicine. And Luffy, at this point, would be a very old experiment, the point where he's, like, kind of put on ice the moment he doesn't show any efficiency and everything. Like, Kuja would give Luffy a kind of an edge in hockey, like, he'd already have, like, an affinity for learning it. For Torino's, he already has an advantage of medicine, he's pretty good at learning that. For Fishman, plus, plus, plus Merfolk. Well, swimming and fishman karate plus slash jujitsu. For giants and ancient giants, well, first he's keen. Well, Luffy, though, he can also modify his body to whatever he pleases. He learned how to do that ability. Originally, he should be around the same height as, like, as, like, as, like, oars. Like, he, like, it's like, maybe, like, the biggest giant, and Luffy should be around that size, genetically. As an adult, as, like, a full-grown adult, he should be around the size of the biggest giant ever. But he's not, because he can kind of mess, 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 mess with his body. And then, um, Luffy can more or less just, like, have, like, the horns and everything. He has the horns that Kaido does and everything. Or Yamato, whatever. Because I say he has, like, like Yamato-esque horns. Then for Skypeans slash Birkins slash Shandians, well, he's more of, like, has, like, a warrior spirit. He's very inventive and slightly, slightly, slightly a bit more religious. For Minx, he can go into Sulong. Like, he has Electro. He's very strong and agile. Long Run Tribe, he has, well, boxing and music. Long leg tribe, kicking, kickboxing, and capoeira are like the main things that he gets. Like an affinity for like certain fighting styles. Third eye tribe, voice of all things. He's dwarves, he's very fast. Lunarians, fire, wings in flight, but do like the Skypean, Birkin, and Chandian DNA. His wings are kind of useless, so I will not give him wings. So Luffy can't fly. But Luffy, Luffy should be around the same age as like, as like. Brooke, who he was put on ice for so long because I've never showed any affinity, any affinity for any for anything. But around the time that Dragon, saying this one, he was, he was a Marine, but saw Luffy, that made him made him abandon being, being a Marine, and what started the revolutionary so no other child experiments could go on. Then Luffy is kind of given to Garp, as Garp would raise Luffy. Then Luffy's put, like, he meets Shanks, and Shanks would realize Luffy, Luffy's kind of a weird kid. And Luffy being able, being able to modify this body, he doesn't really look like a giant or mink. He looks like a human, but with horns. That's about it. Like a human with horns is what he looks like. But um, eventually, when when we see like uh, I guess like he will come in and try to slash around the bar, Luffy just puts his hand in right in the way, and then the blade shatters on impact of Luffy's skin. Luffy just sends him a flying with a simple slap. And we're trying to see Luffy is like, very strong now. After that, now with this, we more or less go over like Luffy eventually having to like um how do I say this. Luffy more or less just gets the strong from Shanks still, but Shanks seems Luffy someone who could be really strong really fast. So, it's very impressive for him. Now, eventually, Luffy, two months later, he meets Garp and everything, but Luffy did not not meet Garp. He meets Ace and Sabo, but doesn't have a devil fruit. He didn't get one. So, well, Luffy doesn't, Luffy can't have three eyes, but more or less kind of just, kind of like, retreats it. And with him, he was like, summon the eye anywhere on his skin. He more or less can like, have it on his palm, and then can look around with it. Like it's very, very handy ability. If he's like fighting, or like wants to put, wants to put like, hand out, and doesn't want to show his head or anything, just like his hand. So yeah, let's see. He can, he can literally have eyes on the back of his head. So yeah, his body, body can kind of like morph, morph to whatever he wants to. That's like the ability the government gave him with different kinds of technology. Let's say Vegapunk did that to him. But eventually, we go on to basically see Luffy train with Ace and Sabo, but he seems, seems to be really strong. And this one physically, he's around the same age as Ace and Sabo. He's on the same size as Ace and everything. And Luffy just says he's 10 years old because this one he he would be around. Well, she, he's in like his 90s. She knows that it's like the 90s, like his like his 60s or 70s, maybe even 80s. But physically, he's around 10 years old. So, yeah. But Luffy eventually would end up more or less just well, cutting Ace and Sabo. Uh, Blue Jam, his crew handled pretty easy. Like the whole the whole Porchemi incident, um, that that was resolved really fast. Plus, Ace can't really outrun Luffy. 
And even if Luffy is tied up by, 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 by Porchemi, Luffy has so much damn physical strength that Porchemi can, is easy to work. Plus, Luffy has a habit of fighting a lot. So, he, he loves fighting, so there's not really much to it. And, um, yeah. Blue Jam just is kind of scared of Luffy now. After he beat the hell out of Porchemi, then Porchemi got pushing it, I got his ass beat, then Blue Jam got his ass beat, then the whole crew got their ass beat by one ten year old. Or, let me check how old Brooke would, Brooke would be at this point. So they, they, got, they, they, got, they, think, they think got beat up by like a 10 year old, but in reality, they got beat up by an 81 year old man. Or an 81 year old boy. He has like the body of a boy with like the, like the, like the chronological age of, a, of like an elderly man. So yeah. But Luffy eventually would end up more or less just kind of living peacefully. I think he has an affinity for multiple martial arts. Like, Jiu-Jitsu and Karate come natural to him. So, like, being near Luffy in a hand-to-hand combat situation is basically a death sentence. By the time Luffy's around, around, like, around 12 years old, the sure thing is just getting... It's like, Luffy, currently, by the time he's 12 years old, up on the level that he is in Thriller Bark, he's on that level of power. We first off, he was able to somewhat, like, just be able to modify some of his body. Like, one limb at a time. Like, he can basically turn one of his limbs to, like, limbs to a giant limb and slam it down. Like, that's, like, his automatic gear third ability. And then with long arm, try to just make his arm extremely long. Like, it's kind of like, he's like a, like a very bad version of the Gogomo Gomu no Mi, but it's genetic. Plus, Luffy can kind of use voice of, all, voice of all things kind of at will by using his third eye. Plus, Ace and, Ace and Saba were told by Luffy and Dragon, which Dragon did reveal himself for Great Eternal Fire. Dragon, Dragon revealed, Luffy, Luffy revealed Luffy's past to him, then well, Ace and Saba heard about it. Plus, Luffy, Luffy learned how to use his Lunarian Fire, so... Yeah. By the time they're seventeen, they all set up sails set up set up sea as a group because Sabo doesn't set up sail alone. When like when like Sabo's dad tries to get Sabo back into the Gold Kingdom, Luffy quite Luffy, Luffy, Luffy began raining hell upon the kingdom for hours on end. And by the time the Marines arrived, they didn't know what did it. They saw some giant green creature destroying the whole ta- the whole Gold Kingdom. That was Luffy turning into a full giant. A full ancient giant. He he wreaked havoc on the kingdom, and Garp knew who it was. But Luffy did it for a good cause, so he only got a warning. But, yeah. And also, no one died. So, Luffy would move on in the next few years, settling out with Ace and Sabo. They finally made a Mare no Mi. And, well, Luffy would train, train Ace with it, using his Lunarian abilities. Just Ace had to use fire. And Ace would be a naming his techniques. Until Luffy began branching off, going for his own crew. And Sabo wanted to find Dragon, so... That he kind of got swimming went into the ball to go. Sabo did by sheer coincidence. They were able to find out where Ball to go is. It was just one one member of the of the Revolutionary Army. And we go on to some more or less see, um, see Luffy go to go to a random village, Ring Shibusuke Village. While he's there, he would encounter um, Zoro. Queen is already dead at this point. Luffy's seventeen. Zoro's sixteen. Luffy's rode along pretty well. Luffy's rode eventually share a drink of sake. Or, they're not really allowed to drink sake at this point, but they do anyway. I, I, I do not condone underage drinking. Well, they drink it, and they get along so well that this is a thing to become brothers. And Koshiro had watched this, and just very happy that Zoro found someone to more or less be his friend. But Luffy eventually would decide he's going to set up sea again, and Zoro wants to come with Luffy. Luffy agrees, and before he leaves, he's thrown a weapon right by... Well, the weapon thrown to him is, by, is from Koshiro... Into spear. Luffy gets it, means using it, and shows a great affinity for the spear. That is the, it's like the Birkin in him. So, yeah. Now this they said they set sail throughout the east and south blue. Luffy gathering random materials, building building random things, and well, he makes a very modified staff. He makes modified guns. He makes weapons that are so that something some stuff on Luffy's ship. Frankie would even be amazed that he made. By the time Luffy's around 20 years old, he's back in the East Blue with Zoro. Zoro's 19, Luffy's 20. It's been around, it's been around three years. And well, Luffy had just stopped by a certain village met Usopp, but Usopp wasn't old enough in Luffy's. In, in words, Luffy, so Usopp began getting a lot stronger. Um, Luffy came across Brate, him and Sanji along greatly as well. And she taught Sanji how to kickbox and do, do, do capoeira. So, yeah. So Zoro heard about Luffy's um, whole... He's a mixture of basically every single power, powerful race in the One Piece world. So yeah, in terms, of, in, terms of, in terms of medical knowledge, Luffy is kind of like on the level of law. Not like post-time skip law, but it's like pre-time skip. Assuming law is law, law's medical knowledge grows each and every time, but... 
it was, it was on like a level like pre time skip law in terms of, in terms of medical knowledge. Actually, it's like post time skip chopper actually around that. But eventually, Luffy would go to her village, grab Usopp, but still, he, Luffy's able to somewhat have a bad vibe about Kuro. So, and so Usopp also does reveal he feels bad about like something feels bad like evil around Kuro. So. Luffy more or less actually tells like Usopp they're gonna come back in a while, and then if they come when they come back, something's bad's going on. They'll 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 check it out. Now that they leave, Usopp going with them, and Luffy gives Usopp a modified slingshot, and this is the Kabuto, like the Kabuto Usopp would have in Wano. And we'll, we'll also point out there's an area in it if Usopp, Usopp were to twist it a certain way, a snack would fall out. So yeah. And Zoro also gets like like, like a modified gets like two modified katanas from Luffy. And when Zoro gets it, these katanas can also like kind of just catch fire. So yeah. Now this Luffy would more or less go on, and they find Nami, but they find her. Well, I guess it's in Orange Town. I'd say the same the same way that they found her in Canon. But in Orange Town, well, we have to just take out the two guys with a slingshot, and now they have to defeat Buggy. Well, Luffy just jumped in the air, making his hand giant, slamming it right down on the whole building, crushing it. And killing most members of Buggy's crew. Or, not most, but a decent amount of them. Buggy gets up, and his body's just kind of completely crushed, and Luffy said, alright, that's settled. Now me immediately, like, her jaw dropped seeing that. Now with that, Luffy would end up picking up Buggy, and throw him onto a ship. Like, he throws them on, onto the ship, and Nami had during this time been, like, raiding their ship as they're being put onto it. Eventually, Luffy just pushes the shit out, the shit, not the shit, the ship out to sea. And with this, well, they get back on their boat and they leave. But he kind of like made his own boat. He's pretty crafty. Like from being a, from being like part Skypean, he has a very inventive style of thinking. But then as a Birkin, he has a pretty big warrior. Then as a Sandian, he's very religious in some ways. And Luffy also is aware of certain things that are only heard of in the New World. He's aware of, he's aware of pawning glyphs. He's aware of a lot of things. So yeah. Nami then actually brings them to her village, wanting them to beat up Arlong. And Luffy actually being so Nami, he can morph into like different races. Like he can, he can morph into a mink, a long arm, a long leg, a three eyed member, a dwarf, a lunarian, a giant, a skypean, a fishman, a tornado member, a tornado king member. Um, Luffy can also switch his gender to become a female and be part of the Kuja. He can do that, he just doesn't do it. Because, well, he doesn't want to. Luffy currently doesn't really have a gender because he can trans he can switch from whatever he wants to be. If he, if he feels like like blending and blending in with like like Kuja, then boom, he's a woman. So, yeah. But um, Luffy eventually when he comes across Arlong, turns into a fisherman before he walks in, and then tells Arlong he's a fisherman with the ability to basically transform into like like different races, or like just change from his body. Arlong thinks thinks Luffy would be powerful. But suddenly Luffy would turn, make his arm giant and green, signaling he's a... Actually, no, probably, he'd probably, probably, probably be red, because, well, fish, well, yeah, orange was red, so... Like a giant ancient giant arm, slamming it right down on, on Arlong, crushing his body, completely breaking it. And then the rest of Fishman attack Luffy, and using his Fishman karate, he's pretty decent at it, actually. Kind of learned it, learned it through time. He eventually was able to defeat most of the men in there, like Fishman in there, and he wins, so, yeah. Next stop, Baratier. They get to the Baratier. Well, they're there, Luffy, Luffy talks to Sanji a bit, and with that, Sanji's like, okay, cool. Well, we can leave for now, but, um, you're you, you going to be in a rush, so we can leave now, but I, we can come back and get something later, because he has also need to head, head back to Usopp's start village, right? They're like, yep, we need to head back there soon. Also, Sanji seems to be already already able to use Diablo Jambe to do what Luffy taught him about kickboxing and capoeira. So, Sanji's already, already decently, decently powerful. Like, kind of like any lobby level in power. Now, with this, we go on. And Luffy would would just arrive at Sir Village right as the Kuro's crew had finished attacking. Someone means like ran through the village, pushing open Kaya's like, cow, like, like mansion door, seeing Kaya about to be killed by Kuro, but Usopp would basically get Kuro. And shockingly, this is physically overwhelming him, like he's breaking Kuro's arm with simple like pulling methods. And with, and so with that, Usopp would kick Kuro's back as hard as he can, breaking both of his arms. And then basically, some just fits around to Kuro's face, knocking him out. But the moment Usopp looks outside, he sees the whole village is saved by Luffy and Zoro and Sanji and Nami. The whole village is just saved. So yeah, they won. Now they have to turn back, going on to the Bratier, because Sanji needed to get something real quick. They arrived there, they arrived as Don Krieg had arrived. Zeph gave him food, and then he left, and they arrived as Don Krieg is there. 
At least the right, the right ship arriving. It's actually a decent tight ship. Kind of like the size of the Sunny. I'd say that. Luffy's a pretty, pretty inventive guy. Like, I'm level like Frankie inventive. Probably even a bit, a bit higher than that. But Luffy immediately basically coated this staff, not staff, I mean, this spear in fire, and then threw it right at Don Creek's ship. And he threw it while there's a little hand spinning until it kind of turned into like a giant, like, kind of like the size of like a gigantic fireball with just the flames around it. But then it crashed right through Don Creek's ship, and kind of just, he's breaking it in half. Then the ship sank, and well, um, they're saved. Or at least, well, um, well, the ship's gone, but Luffy's head kind of went into the water until Luffy just held his hand out and a giant rope shot and grabbed on, well, right back on Luffy's arm and pulled the staff back to him. Luffy jumped down at Don Craig, who fired bullets at Luffy, but they all kind of just hit his skin and bounce off. He's able to make his skin as durable as an ancient giant plus Lunarian. So, there's not, there's not wasn't much effect to it. Luffy had death Don Craig, stabbed him right through the chest with the staff, or staff, I mean, with the spear, and then Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, Nami... And um, the rest of me and dropping all of me and dropping the Donkey crew left and right. Sanji versus Pearl. Sanji kicked the crap out of Pearl's head so hard, it almost killed him. Gein versus Sanji. Sanji's able to beat Gein, but Gein does reveal he's not a bad guy. It's just his crew came here and he didn't know they're going to do this. So Gein kind of does the same thing, just wrapping up his crew and then leaving. So, yeah. Now, this Miyako's arrived, Zoro and Miyako fight, kind of goes the same way. It's just Zoro's swords are still broken, but Luffy, Luffy immediately repairs them, which shocks Mihawk, but he doesn't really question it. But Zoro's swords were obviously, like, more technologically advanced than other things in the world. What Luffy did when he realized that these swords were too te technologically advanced and they shattered too easily and, well, they were too hard to repair. Well, Luffy kind of has a more of a Skypean thought. He began making impact dials. The impact, uh, heat dials, everything. He began making, he began making everything. You already made heat dials, it's just, they're not dials. They're more like heat pads, like, or, or heat blocks. Like, they shoot fire from, from blocks. I mean, as long as these guys roll swords, and these are swords kind of just basically in, almost indestructible. But now, they can now shoot lightning. We look at me like every bit of the, um, how do you say this? We can have made... All of the dials that are things, but they're more, they're more blocks now. But then they're solving Zoro swords, and swords look normal swords, like normal swords, but they're not. They're way they're way different than normal. So yeah. Now this, um, we we kind of stayed on stayed on the on the Brothy a bit to just take care of Zoro. And then they had to log town. They had to log town. I was they fight Smoker, but Smoker can't really keep up with Luffy at all. We eventually just dive in the water. And the smokers like thought like he would drown, but Luffy seems to be swimming around perfectly fine. And Luffy just jumped in the air, slamming tons of water right down on on the smoker's body, making smoker very vulnerable. As Luffy just delivers one ten ton or ten brick fist right smoker's chest, knocking him out. The Zoro and Tashigi that kind of goes the same way. Until Zoro would buy Yubashi and Kitetsu, but just keep his two swords with him. And actually, will he kind of kind of like Kitetsu and Yubashiri as like. What about Tashigi's whole dream to collect, to collect all the swords? Well, eventually when he does leave, he doesn't really, Tashigi doesn't really want to be a pirate. Oh, he is a pirate, but he does say his captain doesn't really want to be a pirate. Luffy's goal is becoming king, or isn't becoming king of the pirates, but return and change his hat. With Tashigi is certain circumstances, like his captain just wants to help them accomplish, accomplish their dreams while accomplishing his, which is to return a certain object, object to someone. But that person is a Yonko. But their circumstances will require them to fight. So... They, they don't really care who they fight, they'll fight, they'll fight to win. But she hears this, and is like, oh, she's not really a pirate, but your circumstances kind of resemble being a pirate. So a nod, and so she then says, alright then, how about this? You're stronger than me, how, how, about, how, about you, how about you collect half the blades, I'll collect the other half. So she, so she, so she then gives, then gives Zoro half, half like, not half, but like a copy of her book that she uses to find all the swords, and now Zoro will take it, and then says he'll find, all the, find, find the rest of the swords, or half of them for her, or all of them if he comes across them. She would nod, and Zoro would leave, departing, departing, saying goodbye to Tashigi. So with this, they go, they go over this mountain with Laboon. If he's actually able to contact Laboon, like, or kind of, kind of like a somewhat connection with him by using his, this, like, third eye. It's really hard to control because it takes up a lot of stamina, making Luffy pass out. But Laboon does move. Crocus comes out, seeing Luffy asleep, or pass on the dock, and they reveal that Luffy had to tell Laboon to move, and it took a lot, took a lot of energy. It was like, oh, well, it's kind of weird. Voice of all things, I guess. He thinks that, doesn't say voice of all things out loud. But eventually, everything else kind of goes the same way. Once Luffy wakes up, it goes the same way. Just Luffy doesn't fight Laboon. 
Then they had Whiskey Peak. Goes the same way. Is Zoro doesn't fight Luffy because Zoro already knows he'd lose. But Luffy also trusts Zoro a lot more. So he's like, all right, these guys must have a good reason to attack us, or he must have had a good reason to attack them. One of the two, but something happened. Up until we go on to more or less Mr. Five and his Valentine attacking the Straw Hats. Well, the moment with Luffy's hit by a giant explosion, the Straw Hats aren't even phased. They just look at Luffy just as the smoke clears, and Luffy's just not really, not really, doesn't really care about that. Luffy just jumps in the air and just does like a very swift, like, like I guess a, like a roundhouse kick midair, hitting Mr. Five on the side of the head, knocking him out. Also, I'm going to go over Luffy's size. His genetic size currently, well, he's around the size of, oh, how tall is the biggest giant? Luffy currently uh, would be around the size of San Juan, San Juan Wolf if he was at, if he was like at full size, not like not not not, not, not manipula manipulating anything. So San Juan Wolf size would be his genetic size. But the normal size he keeps himself to at a like at a maximum, as like like probably like the same height as Frankie. So yeah, so kind of weird, but still same height as Frankie. Now with this, we go on, and eventually, eventually they, well, first off, Luffy is able to beat Mr. Beat Mr. Five by just Electro by shocking him. Valentine was taken care of, taken care of by Nami, and she got a lot more modified staff from Usopp and Luffy. Usopp came up with the idea of climb attack, and then Luffy kind of just gave it all kind of engineering abilities that he thought it could use. And, well, it's kind of on level that it is, like, post-time skip, but not quite after Fishman Island, I guess, like, so let's say, let's say it's probably like on level that it is at a whole kick island, like, around that level. That's her, that's her climb attack. Then pressing this button can turn it off if you, like, she, like only, she, not only she, but only she knows where the button is beside the Straw Hat crew, and then she can use it as, like, a weapon, as, like, a staff. So, yeah. And then, uh, well, hmm. There's one thing that could happen, but I don't think Sanji would trust Luffy fully just yet to just disclose it to him. Well, I guess the next stop would be, would be, like, uh, um, it would be Little Garden. When Luffy meets Dory and Bragi, he reveals that he's an ancient giant. It's just his devil fruit. They didn't trust it until he reveals he's an ancient giant. <laughs> Let me see how big he is. See, the same thing I said on Wolf. So, yeah. I'm gonna check this one real quick. But when he meets Dory's like an ancient giant, they see how big he is, and they're in sheer amazement. He's like 590 feet, 500, 580 feet, 590, 590. 590 to, five, 590 to 600 feet tall. It's an ancient giant, and there's in sheer amazement. The, these two are like uh, are like 160 meters, which Luffy's like a lot taller than that. So, yeah, he's huge. No, actually not meters, actually. Luffy is like... Like 200 meters, I think. I don't know, but... He's huge. Compared, compared to both of them, he's huge. And they're very impressed by it. Like, 160 feet, and Luffy's, like, the 500s. <laughs> so, yeah. But eventually, Luffy would more or less just say, he's actually, just, like, revert back to his human form. And, well, she offers, like, he can go, kind of, like, alter his body to be around the same height as them, and they could fight as, like, proper giants. But he'll use his bare hands. So Luffy reverts to their, not reverse, but goes to their height, and they've been fighting. Luffy beats them both with his bare hands. And the bet they had made is basically they head back to, El head back to Elbaf, ending the stupid debacle. Or debate, I don't care. But eventually they lose, and they head back to Elbaf. Versus they build a, they get a boat, they have to build a small boat. Well, not small, but a huge boat to fit them. And they do it pretty fast with the help of Luffy. So yeah. And uh, with this, I guess we need to move on to Mr. Three attacking. Mr. Three attacks, he doesn't really do too much. The like, simple Onigiri from Zoro won't kill this man. So, yeah. But Zoro's two swords really have a name. If this, if this is only one part so far. If I in this as not a movie, but as a part, then you guys, then you guys, you guys can name the sword if you, you can name the swords if you want to, but I probably, probably, probably won't name them. So, yeah. But eventually, this, um, Mr. Three is taking down my Zoro's on Giri, but Zoro didn't use full power, just, just enough to knock him out. And then with this, we can go on to um miss, miss golden week trying to paint on luffy but it doesn't really work at all he's kind of immune to it nami is able to take her out pretty easily and with that they had a drum island all there when nami is it luffy, luffy takes care of her it's just they're already on the way there so they kind of stop there to hang out for a bit and rest but vivi with them of course 
And well, when Dalton, like, when Gun does, when Gun, when Gunfire does happen and shoot at BV, he literally just blocks the attack with his bare arm. And just says, like, you know, we're not here for fight, we're here to relax. That's about it. But walking around in the VOC, the amount of sick people actually ask, like, where's the doctor if they're all sick? Dalton says that they talked about Wapple and everything. Luffy then reveals he's actually one of the best doctors in the East Blue. Or the best doctor in the East Blue. He says that. And Dalton's like, wait, you're really the best doctor? Can you heal, can you heal our guys? And Luffy does just that. He heals everyone all across all across from Drum Island. Like, he just travels around it really fast, healing everyone. And for free. There's a doctor that heard about basically everyone being healed all across the East Blue. And wants to know, not East Blue, I mean, all across the Drum Island. And wants to know who did it. She sees the she straw hat ship. And Luffy's just going to sit on top of it, asking which one of them, which one of them is Luffy. Luffy holds his hands up, and Dr. Green actually wants to know how Luffy is so good at, medic- at just so fast, and has such a good doctor. We can't really tell her directly, but it says, uh, just a lot of medical knowledge from that he's gathered from around different parts of the world. Pause real quick. So, uh, where was I? But yeah, so, Luffy just says he has other, other tons of medical knowledge from across the world. And the doctor's like, oh, that's kind of weird, you seem pretty young. And as far as all do know, Luffy's whole secret about him being a government project from almost 90 years ago. So, this one, Luffy's like 88 years old. He says Luffy's, Luffy just says he's over 80 years old. And the doctor says, so, she's like, oh, then, how, then how, why, why do you look so young and I'm still old? He just laughs and he doesn't know why, but it's just the way life happens. But then Luffy also just kind of chuckles, saying, also probably due to the fact he's a giant, so. That confuses her, but he just says that he's devil fruit, so. It kind of alters him. Which kind of affects his aging. Oh, that's why, that's why he looks so young. You can, live, you can live over 300 years. He was like, yeah, probably, probably a bit longer than that, so. Yeah. But eventually, um, Luffy actually offers, like, more to teach them the ways of his medicine as they go on the, they go on the boat. And they find, like, the whole medical cabin. I like their ship. Kaya kind of wanted to be on the ship, and like, and Mary's like, "Oh yeah, it's called the Going Mary." He's like, "No, we don't need a ship, but we'll call, we'll call, we'll call it Going Mary, just in, just in your honor." So the boat is the ship they are they're on, on they're on is called the Going Mary. But eventually, Luffy does just like, show them some like the, show them some, like the medical room as their ship's like it's just, it's just called the Mary, but it's called so it's called the Going Mary, but as big as the Sunny, and it kind of has like most of the same features as well. Like random empty rooms for future crewmates, and when Doctor Chopper sees like he's like the medical room, he's amazed by it. Chopper even shows Luffy shows Luffy drum balls. Luffy crushes up, and then she actually starts going over how the, how it works just through the microscope. Chopper shocked that Luffy got it down so quickly. Luffy immediately takes Chopper's drum balls, telling Chopper to wait a few days, and then he'll give Chopper some better ones. Chopper agrees, as he comes back for three days. Chopper goes to get some red rumble balls. Luffy would say that Chopper should be able to go monster point now, so Chopper did tell Luffy about it. But in monster point, he'll be in full control. If he's not, then Luffy is able to take him down pretty easily. Chopper's rumble balls, Chopper eats, eats all three. He eats all three, he eats a certain one that's a little bit bigger than the rest. But Chopper eats one, well, eventually with this, he eventually will turn to monster point, but he's in full control. This, this rumble ball messes Chopper's brain a bit, making it so he's a bit different in attitude. It makes him, like, how does it? Think of like an edible. That's kind of what it is. It basically just, just one like a, like an edible mixed mixed with the normal ball. It shows all Chopper, making Chopper not go berserk and letting him be able to to like basically be in full control monster point. Chopper thought this was really really cool and actually asked Luffy if he can make him more. Luffy says he doesn't have much time to stay here. He has to head to Alabasta soon, but does tell Chopper that if Chopper would set, set out to sea with him. He can make Chopper a lot more. Even teach Chopper how to make them. And if you can teach, teach Chopper how to make that all cure medicine. Dr. Nishi tells Chopper to go with Luffy. He seems, seems, to be, seems to be a better doctor than her, and probably the best in the world. But that Chopper would be able to revert to like, control where he feels to base, to base form again, and he does just that. With that, he gets on the boat, and Chopper, Chopper will be wasted by Dr. Rain. But unfortunately, Luffy throws her giant, throws her a giant book, saying that's a lot of his medicines that he uses. Now that they leave, and uh, yeah. Next arc, Alabasta. Well, they're in Alabasta, they encounter like millions and billions. They even encounter Ace while he's there. And that kind of goes the same way up until Luffy fights Rockadol for the first time. But Luffy already knows how to beat most Devil Fruits. Like, he, he's been, he's been, out, been out at sea for, for three years at this point. More than he's been, been at sea in canon. In canon combined, he's been out at sea for like a year and a half. So, 
Yeah. Luffy's, Luffy knows, knows how most devil fruits work. Even even Logi is. And already knows that some of them have like have just automatic weaknesses that aren't due to devil fruits. Like like like, 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 like a natural elemental weakness. And the same is, same is water or intense heat. Luffy chooses the, the intense heat option. Completely turn the crocodile's arm to glass as he turned to attack Luffy. Not Luffy. Attack Luffy with sand. But the arm turned to glass. Luffy eventually is able to somewhat use water. Use, use Fishman Karate and defeat, and defeat Crocodile with that. The Marines arrive as Luffy had called them. And they take away they take away crocodile. What the smoker is like like don't arrest them yet. They're not bad guys. This confused the Marines are like, well they're pirates, aren't they? And they're like, no, reportedly they're kind of just having having to do something. They're having they have to deliver something, but they're gonna they're, they're gonna beat up anyone in their way if they have to. Even if it's the Marines. The smoker does that's what Luffy wants to deliver, and Luffy just points to his hat saying this. So, yeah. Luffy's bounty, including the three years he's out at sea, currently is at 120 million. 120 million is his current bounty. He also has been sent like a request to become a warlord, warlord, but he did, but he did not denied it. So yeah. So Luffy is named the Monkey D. Luffy. His name is Luffy. Like that's about it. Just just Luffy. But they're getting named Luffy Monkey D. Luffy. Also, Garp is not blamed for Luffy at all. Like not blamed for him awakening his abilities and now wreaking havoc upon the world. It's, they blame it on Dragon. So yeah. And Garp, Garp, Garp says he didn't know who Luffy was because Garp feigns innocence. He didn't know, know, know about the experiment. But Sengoku and Suru know the truth. So, yeah. But back on to just everything else. Eventually the Marines leave. Um, Crocodile's numbers were not arrested. They don't know where they are. But eventually they have to fight them in the desert. Uh, Zoro has to fight Mr. One but wins pretty easily. And Zoro explains that his, his captain was a genius and made him swords that fit, Zoro, that Zoro, that fit Zoro's power pretty easily. Even if he wants to go all out, the blades will not damage. So, they, they can be used to wonder to whatever extent, to whatever extent he wants. Well, he's just shocked Mr. One. But this actually makes Zoro a better opponent for him. As Zoro, be, Zoro beats Mr. One with a simple onigiri. One onigiri. This one onigiri came from a two-sword style. And Zoro just wanted to test out to, to test out how Wado would pair with another sword using two-sword using two style. And it paired, it paired pretty well. The only sword that Zoro will not let Luffy touch is, is Wado. That's about it. He will not, will not let Luffy touch water at all. Well, he like wield it, but not not re engineer it at all. So yeah. So yeah. And the like, Zoro can use observ observation hockey pretty well, and so can Luffy. So they fought a few random crews and Marines, and they've awakened observation hockey through that. And Luffy is experienced with Kuja, not experienced with Kuja, but due to Kuja DNA, he can more or less kind of like just control. Is hockey to a decent degree, but uh, yeah, I was on to fight Mister Two, but went in one go, and then we would see, um, we would see Mister Three versus Mister Three's down, Mister Four versus Usopp and Chopper plus Miss, plus Miss Merry Christmas. Now Chopper beat Chopper beats these two with Monster Point, and Usopp, Usopp just was just watching. Then Mister Mister actually we can go go to Double Finger versus Nami. Nami won easily. Her clam attack is like is like Whole Cake Island level. That it, she can beat her with just sheer staff abilities. So yeah, and this this is a, this was engineered by Luffy and Usopp. This is overpowered clam attack. So yeah, but with this we move on to um just I guess, I guess Robin. So when she goes down to like the pony Luffy goes with her, and he using his third eye can read it. We just use voice of all things in his third eye at full ability. And it, ma it makes Luffy pass out, but you read the whole point of the lift. Which shocks Robin that he can read it. We can hear it, but it also gains the ability to somewhat read some of the words on it. This Robin carries him back to the ship, and they ask if he used voice of all things, and he th and she said yes. Apparently, if, it's, if that's, that's what it's called, he did that. Now, on the boat, Robin wants to go with them, because Luffy can read pony glyphs as well. We'll hear them. And someone read them. But yeah, she was with them. She actually asks how old Luffy is. She's like, um, oh, like, maybe like a teenager, early 20s. They say he's 80 years old. And Robin is shocked. He's 88 years old. But she sees how advanced the ship is, like a normal pirate ship. Like, the ship has got him automatic cannons. Like, she's asked, like, if he did all this, and they say, yeah. Luffy, Luffy's a genius. And then I'm Luffy wakes up, Robin's on, Robin's on the boat, and she already picked out her room. Well, first of all, she she's just room with Nami right now, but 
we eventually says like, so, like next stop, the place they find that like, a, like somewhere where they can engineer the ship in perfect, like in peace. Then he will he will make the ship a lot bigger. He'll he'll take apart the whole ship and rebuild it if he wants to. But yeah, he's only two feet on, on the screen sharing sharing rooms. He'll make them have their own room. No matter how long it takes. Now with this, eventually they get to Jaya. While in there, well, first off, Lily's bounty it's went from one twenty to be around one eighty. Well, in there, well, Belly doesn't pick on Luffy. He's scared of him. Luffy's bounty is one one twenty million. From what Bellamy knows, instead of the regular 180, so yeah, Bellamy actually does ask, does Luffy if he wants to drink with him, and Luffy says no. Luffy, Luffy knows doesn't know who Bellamy is, and well, I'm gonna go with the, the straw bounties. Bellamy, not Bellamy, Luffy's out. Luffy's out 180. Zoro behind him at matching Bellamy's bounty at 55 million. Behind him we have Sanji at 40 million. Then we have Usopp at 30 million. Robin sells her canonical bounty, and those are the bounties of the straw hats. So, yeah. And the thing is, their water posters don't really say dead or alive, but, like, they say dead or alive, but there's a thing above it that says preferred alive. So, yeah, like, like above alive, there's, like, like, like small caps says preferred alive. They need, they need Luffy back a lot. And then they need the straw hats as well, just in case, in case they have too much information. Like, like, Luffy's, Luffy's preferred alive, the straws are preferred dead. So, kind of funny. So with this, we move on, and um, I guess we go into like the I guess the Skype arc because every time it goes the same way, just Bellamy doesn't fight them. He was more or less too scared. The like, like Skype they pay the entry fee. Luffy pays it in technology, like random inventions he had, but they're worth a lot. He shows them, and she compares Luffy's technology to the ones they have on Skype. Luffy doesn't know what like he doesn't, doesn't know what DNA he's mixed with, but doesn't know what Skypeans, Birkins, or Shandians are, or Lunarians. Like, he's never heard of those races. And when he gets on there, he actually hears about all the races. And Luffy reveals, like, he reveals, like, 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 Conan and, and Palkia that he's a Skypean. Which shocked them because they don't have wings, but Luffy just, just like, because I like, vents them about, like, being mixed with all the races. Like, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. But if you want, if you want to count the count the Chandians and Birkins as something separate, then that's fifteen. But here about this, like, oh, so you're a mixture of all of us then, even the extinct Birkins. Because like, wait, 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 what do you mean they're extinct? Let's talk about and now, and now Luffy realizes he has to kick some guy's ass, even though he uses lightning. But Luffy does does recognize the weakness of lightning being rubber. But I was curious about Luffy. He didn't like kind of. Find out if you're talking trash about him, so I guarantee you can find out about Luffy. But he's Luffy of freaking nature, and someone he probably could not be if he's mixed mixed with all these races, races from the from like the lower lower realm. Like he thinks that Luffy is someone equal to him, possibly. Like he's cautious of Luffy. And then Luffy says he knows what Nell's weakness would be if he uses lightning, assuming that Nell would use lightning logia because it's elemental. Luffy eventually would go around and tell the army how to beat Enel using rubber, and he was able to help them craft a very good part, not part, but good rubber, met rubber weapons. Pause. So, Enel's not nervous about this because they're going to go to war. But then, with this, he marches an attack upon, well, Skypea. But Luffy had already gathered together Chandians, and the Chandians hear about Luffy being, well, a, well, a mixture of all of them. Luffy only says he's like he's a Birkin, Shandian, and Skypean mix. Or hybrid. So why Birkin treats Luffy kinda of like a kinda of like a brother, so to say. Luffy, Luffy, Luffy fought the spear and coat it in flames. But then then says mixed with all the dials possible. Because well he also got the dials and then being sight being like kinda of like dissecting them. And kinda of making his own thing. With this Luffy would move on and attack the army first, with Enel being the one fight Luffy, Luffy being able to somewhat Kind of turn his staff into rubber. It must have been spear into rubber, but it'd be a very, very weird process. Because like, like rubber, rubber can really hurt, but like, it can't hurt. I'd say, but he can make it hurt. You know, in some of his own way, like, by like just making this. slapping the hell out of a nail with rubber. That's not what he's doing. 
And eventually with this, Luffy eventually would kind of supercharge it, and now with lightning, as he's in his, like, five, like, he, you know, no, go max power, and then Luffy just supercharges him with lightning, when and Nell's at that full power, because Nell can't really damage Luffy, because he has, because he coaches staff and rubber. I mean, spear and rubber. And then when Nell's at full power, Luffy supercharges him with lightning and electro, and Nell goes overboard, as his limit is kind of broken, and he passes out from that. With Nell being asleep now, or just unconscious, Luffy stabs him right in the back, this the spear stack killing an L, it just kills him because an L supercharged and then passed out, and now then now an L's dead. So with, so with an L dead and most of the army that an L had gathered defeated, well, Skypeans and Bur not Burkin, Skypeans and Chandians can now live in peace and without worry. They have Luffy tons of technology and gold. He accepts it all, and um, yeah, they, with that they leave. They land. Well, the ship is pretty durable, so there's really no damage taken. Well, he's there, yeah, she asked Galilaw to help them, like, rebuild, like, like they take part of the ship, then rebuild it. Iceberg will even seize the ship and thinks of it as, like, something, like, like, like mesmerizing. Well, by the way, Luffy does use wood, but it's wooden used with different, different kinds of technology. Like, something that, like, no one's even ever heard of. Like, like there's Wapple Metal, Luffy kind of made that, and now it's kind of, like, kind of called Luffy Metal. He kind of fuses that with his, infuses that with his wood, and then he just he sends that other technology with his wood. So, with that, the ship's pretty durable, like, very flexible, bendable, everything. So, this the fall from the sky didn't really do much to it. Like, at best, at best it needs to be repainted. With this, with this here, they, they take about the ship, Frankie even hears about this, and she wants to join in, and they, he joins, he does, does just that. They see all, all the technology advanced stuff on the ship, like, like Frankie, Frankie cannot help but just give Luffy the title of Vegapunk, like, saying, Are you sure you're not Vegapunk, like, the man whose technology is 500 years ahead? Luffy would say that if Vegapunk's 500 years ahead, then he's 600 years ahead. Frankie can't help but laugh. Frankie cannot help but laugh at this. As I'm pretty sure that in One Piece, it's like the 1400s. And, or it'd be canonically the 1400s, because pirates and everything, pirates still exist, but I guess like the main era of pirates could be like the 1400s, if people use dates like that. But then 500 years ahead would be the 1900s. And then 100 years after that would be, would be like the 2020s. Luffy, Luffy can actually like, 700 years ahead of everything. I, I'd buy that. So 700 years ahead is, the, is Luffy. The man has 700 years of technology. Like, the man with 700 years worth of advanced technology. That's Luffy's title. But with this, well, their ship is rebuilt. And it's actually like, kind, of, kind of around the size of a kid's ship. And kid's ship is huge. So, yeah. So with this, the ship is, the ship is now built. And well, Frankie actually has to join Luffy. And he thinks that Luffy could help him become a better shipwright and a better, better inventor. Or, builder. Luffy agrees actually on the condition that Frankie can, like, Frankie allows Luffy to experiment with his body. And Frankie agrees. Luffy brings, brings Frankie into his room and begins taking part Frankie's body and rebuilding it. To the point where it is, like, the level that, uh, that it is in Wano. And this ship that they rebuilt, plus with, ice, with, iceberg, with iceberg Frankie and Usopp's help, Luffy built the ship in around eight days. Until eventually we move on, and now we go on to Eni's lobby. Uh, Water 7, not Water 7, I mean, CP9 kind of felt threatened by Luffy and had retreated to Eni's lobby, and warned Eni's lobby about them, and Eni's lobby like, can we attack them? But Luffy already called out that, that CP9 were kind of false members, they're, they're too anxious around Luffy to be normal people, and deems them Marines, possibly. That iceberg actually, actually offers to pay Luffy to attack them, because they've been gone for work for a while now, and actually thinks that they could possibly be, well, Marines. And Luffy does attack, with Frankie helping him. While they're there, they don't really take a sea train. They take, they, take, they take their ship. But Frankie and Luffy installed a booster on it. A jet booster. It's huge. Fire it off, and they are sort of flying all the way across. Run, run fast, like, kind of double the sea train speed. Or probably called Drupal that. But eventually they arrive at, at any lobby, being fading them all. Luffy comes across the giants, but Usopp, Usopp convinces them to stop fighting. Now we go to the strides facing down against... Well, CP9. Well, the moment like, they're about to fight, Robin, Rob, Robin then has to use clutch on, on Khalifa and takes her out with like, like by killing her. And then Luchi will then attack Luffy, but Luffy kicks him right into the water, saying, Alright, then you can die. You can die. If you want to attack me first, you can die. I don't care. Now that she scares most CP9, Luchi's kicked right in the water that easily. Then Jabber attacks Luffy, and Sanji just says his good, good old Diablo Jambe right into the water. Zoro's Onigiri's Kaku. Uh... Fukuro is taken care of by Chopper. Not Chopper, I mean. 
by by Frankie. Chopper takes care of, takes, takes care of Kumidori, and we see Usopp take care of um of Spandam. This defeats was with CP9, but then the Straw Hats leave. And the thing is, it was only the Straw Hats, only the Straw Hats, and they took down all of these lobby by themselves. But before they leave, we see Luffy and Frankie charging upon attack with their the ship, and all those automatic cannons on the, on, on the Sunny. That's what they, that's what they named it. Open fire. And they burn any lobby to the ground. They have a buster call on their ship. That's what, that's what, that's what, that's what this is. This is worth a buster call in one boat. They bring Luffy I-5 and they leave. But I said Luffy are on the same, same size as Frankie. I mean like post times get Frankie. But now Luffy already got a lot bigger. Because well years. Not years but months have passed. Luffy currently I'd put like. Almost at Brooks' height, so Brooks like nine feet tall. I put Luffy equal to equal to Dragon in height, so like eight feet tall for Luffy. He's eight, he's eight feet tall. But with this, we move on, and we see Luffy, who would end up going on the Frankie to well, um, I guess the uh, I guess they go on to um for Triangle and meet Brook. But then you and Chopper aren't really too scared of Brook. Like Chopper's like, hmm, this is kind of weird, but I guess you can be on the boat. They're more scared of Luffy than they are of Brook, because they don't know what the hell's in his room. Like, Luffy's room is closed off to the whole world, because there's, there's so much damn, damn, damn technology in there that they don't know what it could be. Because when Luffy had cleared out his room, no one knew what he had in there. No one knew where, where it was. So they don't know where stuff went, but it was gone. And then by the time, they're, by the time everything's rebuilt... Luffy, Luffy built a, built his own room. Like Frankie's the only one that knows what's inside Luffy's room. Frankie's the only one. But Frankie does see Luffy's room somewhere terrifying because it's technology that's beyond their comprehension. But right now, Luffy, Luffy has been chosen his room to make a nuclear bomb. He has, he has been chosen to do so. So, yeah. Um, pause real quick. Okay, so if this... Um, well, this was just kind of a tangent about Luffy's bedroom and how it scares the Strats more than more than it scares Brook more than they more than they're scared of Brook. Luffy's Luffy's the mention of Luffy's bedroom scares the Strats more than Brook's presence. So yeah. Now with this, they go on and they get to fight Moria. But in all honesty, when Brook tells them that the weakness is salt, well, Luffy's like, all right, we'll help you get your shadow back. If Tell tells the weakness of the shadow of the zombies, though, like that's the that's his first thought. They're like, oh, it's salt. It's like, okay, then uh, come here real quick. That Luffy makes everything like makes makes, makes makes weapons related to salt, and actually gives it to Brook, and then they'll take the weapons. And Luffy says if you counter Moria, you guys can probably beat them on your own, as he refers to Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, and Robin, because they're the stronger ones on the crew. Chopper can probably beat Oars, but not Moria himself. And well, they do as Luffy had said. Luffy just tells them a ship building stuff, and Los Rats defeated every single mem- member of Moria's crew, even the zombies. Usopp beat down Perona pretty easy without being touched by her ghost, as he would have been affected by the ghost in this one. And well, yeah. And eventually, with this, we go on to basically see like, like Zoro cut down Ors by himself, and then he cuts down cu- cuts down Ryuma. First, cut down Ryuma, but then he cut down cut down cut down Moria and Ors at, all at once. But then Moria got back up using Thousand Shadows. Then with a combined attack from the Strats, he defeated he defeated Moria. And Kuma arrived, but on the boat, the short the Strat ship. While he's there, he'd fight Luffy, but he should see the boat is basically just like like responding to Luffy whenever he says something like, like "boat, what? I'll fire on Kuma," and the thing is, the boat just fires at Kuma. Like he pushed Kuma onto like on like the other bark, and the boat being firing cannonballs at, at Kuma at rapid speeds. But eventually, Luffy's able to do a suicide attack, as well. This attack was basically combined of every bit of DNA he had in his body, but it was only in one arm. I thought he fired an attack right at Frankie as his arm was coated in lightning, flames, it was giant. Well, she is like, like, it was a, it's like, it's kind of like as, it wouldn't be as big as an ancient giant limb, but about as big as a regular giant's limb. It's the size of the dwarves kind of brought it down, but it was like, extremely long and just giant arm. This attack hit Kuma, as Kuma had basically dodged a cannonball and got out right in, right in Luffy's line of fire. And Luffy basically called this, called this attack the Wrath of Races. And with this, they sent Kuma flying, and Kuma almost landed in the water until he hit himself and sent flying back onto wherever he, wherever he came from. But Kuma's body is basically, basically destroyed, and Luffy's arm is very badly hurt. So, yeah. 
With this, he means he's performing surgery on his own arm, so Chopper arrives and Chopper, Chopper helps him. So, yeah. Now, with this, we move on, and we go to basically just Luffy versus... No, Luffy, I mean. We go to Strut, and we go to Sabaody. Zed, Sabaody, but while they're there, I'd say that Luffy's able to somewhat, like... How's this? Um... Is able to meet, is everything go the same way? I guess like everything all the way to Sabaody up until Kizaru. But Kuma isn't there. Actually, let's say like Kuma is there. Kuma, Kuma recovered. Kuma recovered in just a few days. But his one arm is one arm is pretty badly messed up, to the point where it's kinda of had, had to be amputated. But Kuma eventually just began fighting the Straw Hats. But take took Luffy as a bigger threat as he did tell Kizaru and, and like and Sintomaru that if you underestimate Luffy, he may kill you. He almost killed Kuma. They, they, they didn't come on one of the stronger warlords to ever exist. Now, now they're concerned if he was almost killed by Luffy. Because Luffy almost, like, Luffy had, had the stars attack Sotomaru and almost beat Sotomaru as a group. It's just his hockey was able, was able to keep him away from them. But Luffy fight, fights, fights Kuma and they seem like equals because Luffy can no longer use his Wrath of Races technique because it, his arm is still pretty, damn, pretty badly damaged. But still with one arm, he's on the part with Kuma. Him and Kuma are both, are both, are both, are both missing their opposing arms, like, Luffy's missing his right arm, Kuma's missing his left arm. Or Kuma's missing his left arm, Luffy can't use his right arm. So, yeah. Luffy he defeats Kuma with sheer ability, and now Kizaru had fought Rayleigh for long enough, and Luffy had been interfering, or helping, I'd say. Luffy with this, Kizaru had left with Kuma and Tomaru. But before they left, Kuma was able to tell Kizaru to just get him, get him behind the struts, and he did just that. And as Kizaru supposedly left, Kuma appeared on the struts, hitting them all to their, to their design locations. Well, he left, he didn't tell Rayleigh about everything, and then he left, left with Kizaru. So, yeah. But with this, we move on, and Luffy's now on, well, on, on, um, what was it? Fucking Amazon Lily. I was there when he hears about what island he's on from, from, I'm pretty sure it was like Margaret. He's able to tell Margaret that he can transform into a woman and does just that. So, yeah. He doesn't like being a woman because he doesn't know how to act like a, I guess, like, ha- act like, act like Kuja woman. He doesn't know how to act like them. That's about it. There's acting like, like, like a Kuja doesn't know how to do that, but basically, he, Luffy just says that he's, or that she's, from just like a, like a random island overseas. Like, just, he's, he's, he fought Kuma and got smacked here. Luffy Boa arrives, and Boa hears that Luffy fought Kuma. But Kuma fought a male. She immediately asks if Luffy's Delphi user they can, they can change gender. Like his Delphi can like kind of swap his swap out his like um he can just basically morph, morph his body. Hugo said he can. He can morph, morph his body to even copy different races. This shows off he can turn into a giant, turn into a dwarf, turn into, turn into a lunarian, turn into a mink. Luffy doesn't really have a specified gender, and with that they allow him in to their island because he doesn't have have, have a specified one. He can basically, be anything he wants. Like Bobo get along and Bobo get gains a crush on Luffy. Which would somewhat make Luffy, not Luffy, but kind of make Boa part of the LGBTQ. So fan art would be correct if you want to do do fan Boa next time Luffy. So yeah, I guess that would work now. LGBTQ and Nar, not Nar, but in One Piece now. Funny. All right. So Luffy, Luffy's brought along, along brought along with Boa to, to and fell down because well, Ace is still captured, and Ace did put up a bigger fight against Blackbeard. So yeah. Only thing is that Ace had beat in Blackbeard. It's just he passed out, and the Marines arrived, taking care, taking, like taking care of Blackbeard, but taking Ace and fell down. So when they arrive, well, Ace had actually just left not that long ago. So yeah. All there, I guess everything seemed to go the same way. Just the first time Luffy fights fights Magellan, he wins pretty easily. And well, he uses it, he wins basically using his dwarf speed and then just using what he learned from, of hockey from Boa Hancock. Hardy Cardi can use observation decently well. The only thing I need to work on was, was arm and hockey. Then he can he learned how to how to do that. Also, Boa heard about Luffy being a government experiment and how they had used Kuja DNA. Which made Goa not Goa made Boa pretty mad. So, yeah. But Luffy eventually would kind of just um. Well, the, attack, the, the attack they would use they would use kind of like a mixture of electro but also fishman karate. I'm glad they're actually able to somewhat like, kind of just shock Magellan, literally and figuratively, and defeat him. So, so they, they defeat Magellan. They find Ivan. Ivan shocks shock Luffy's ability. What well, does say? Yeah, it's kind of funny. So, cool. 
Gonna call Luffy a copy, copy copycat of him. But Luffy's a lot cooler, so yeah. And she's gonna find Jinbei, and Jinbei will teach Luffy big, like better versions of Fishman Karate because Luffy just revealed to Jinbei his whole his whole thing. Even Buggy overheard this and now realized why he couldn't beat Luffy the first time they met. Uh, Luffy also was able to do his thing. Uh, pause real quick. Alright, so we can go on, I guess, to just Marine Ford, because most, most of everything went the same way. The thing is, Luffy can actually use Armament Hockey now and Fishman Karate. He's Infinity for, for Hockey, like, because he's a Kuja. Now with this, eventually he arrives, well, they all arrive at Marine Ford. And the thing is, Smoke and Tashigi avoid Luffy. They avoid him. And well, the first one about Kobe, because Shell Time did happen. But the thing is, um, Alita kind of stopped there, got defeated by Morgan, and then we more or less, we got kind of took in Kobe. There's not really a bond between Luffy and Kobe, but Luffy actually saved Kobe from an attack, as that attack was from a Marine, and that would have killed Kobe, but it would have hit Luffy. I thought Kobe, Kobe was kind of shocked that Luffy saved him, but Luffy revealed who he is. And like, oh, you're like, oh, you're, Garp, you're Master Garp's grandson. I thought Luffy and Kobe can have their bond, because Luffy had saved Kobe from, well, saved Kobe from, from one of his own allies. Kobe had thanked Luffy profusely. Now Luffy and Kobe can have the safe, uh, same bond, because Kobe's life was saved by Luffy. So, yeah, the bond is the same. And, well, Luffy just began basically just dominating the whole battlefield. Up until he came across, well, him and Ace came across... Um, Aki Inu. When Aki Inu tried to like, use his, like, his use red dog, red dog technique on Luffy, Ace didn't run him away, but instead, he combined his attack with Luffy as they used a giant fire fist, a combined one, to push back Aki Inu significantly. And with that, Luffy being amping his flames up to its full ability as Ace began pushing his power to its limit, and Ace, well, his flames began turning a bit blue, but sparking. Luffy's pushing his pushing abilities to its limit, had actually turned his flames completely blue, and with this, they destroyed Aki Inu's red dog, and shoved Aki Inu right through the ice. And, well, this lead actually resulted in a tie in Marine Ford, not a defeat for the Pirates, a tie, a draw. They tried to leave, with Whitebeard being dead, but still, Ace was still alive. But instead, Aki Inu almost faced death from Ace and Luffy, so almost, almost dead Admiral and dead, dead Yonko. Now was not, not looking good for either side. So, yeah. But I'm in this part here. Please enjoy, like, and subscribe, comment, comment for another part. Name, name Zoro's two very, very, very much tech-enhanced swords in the comments. Bye.